Hi everyone, Jim the Plane Man here and welcome back to Plane Time. So electronics are functional. I'm going to turn down the camera in a second and show you um, how everything's working and what we have to do um, to get it ready to use in the model. But, um, you know, a major, major leap forward here. Really exciting moment. Happy to share with you because I want to... Um, like my goal here is to to help other people who want to build the same plane. So um, we're basically going to uh, show the uh, RX 144E receiver from um, AEO and um, purchased, I think, from well, not I think, purchased from uh, DW Hobby and um, 3700 KV uh, brushless motor and the two micro servos that came in the, the package with the machine, uh, all functional. And, uh, and then we'll be featuring the, my new jumper T-Lite uh, transmitter, which is what I'm gonna use to control this little, um, little machine and We'll have some things to say about that. There's, there's lots been posted about the Jumper t light, so I don't want to focus too much on that for the purposes of this video, but there's some, some interesting things to note about it. Uh, hopefully I'll try to keep it fairly generic, so um, as far as the, the plane goes, we'll talk mostly about the receiver and the, the electronics that go in the plane. And I'm going to... I learned some interesting things about the Jumper t light, so I'm going to put a separate video on to talk about that. So, without further ado, let's turn the camera down to the board and see what we have. So, this is our electronics for the Dancing Wings Hobby Sop With Pup. We have the AERC Electronics Operations. So, that's AEORC.com. RX144E transmitter. That's that here. That transmitter is a, you, you might as well call it, it's not quite a brick, I suppose it doesn't have built-in servos, but it's got everything else, including a built-in ESC, which works. So um, I don't need the ESC that came with the model. I received the model as, a, as sort of a partial kit with a motor, an ESC, and two servos. By using this receiver, which is a, a DSMX compatible receiver, I can, uh, but with the built in ESC, I can uh, dispense with the ESC, the electronic speed controller that came with the model, and keeps it much simpler in terms of all of the wires and everything that are floating around. Now, of course, I'm going to um, mount everything properly once, um, as, as pretty much the next step. But I did want to just show you guys uh, what, um, you know, the basics, how it actually works. So, um, so uh, and I'll show you, and I'll talk through about what I needed to do. So, what I have connected here, and this is the soldering that we just finished, is the, the, the motor is connected through this um, three-wire connector and through the, the little... Um, set of sockets that I actually connected in. Turns out I got the the wires just by uh, pure luck, I suppose, uh, in the right order. So the motor spins nicely counterclockwise. I'll show you that in a second. And, uh, and then I soldered, as you saw in the soldering videos, the connector here to the three pins that come out here. And I did get myself a multimeter and check that I didn't have a bridge between those three pins. So um, they were nice and clean, and uh, and then it was just a question of simply plug the wire into here, connect these up, and we're good to go. I soldered a connector here for the battery, red to positive, black to negative, and the battery will... So we've got a, a little 150 milliamp hour LiPo that we're going to plug in here in about uh, about a minute flat, and then... As you may have seen, and I, I'll mention again, I'll link to the 
um, AERC manual from the, the comments, see below, um, that show the, the, the extensive two-page manual that documents the, um, effectively what each one of the plugs is. And um, so the left plug is rudder, the right plug is uh, elevator, and the, um, the throttle goes over here and there's plugs for ailerons, but we're not using those. So because this is a three channel model, so we don't need it. And then the two servos over here and um, the JST SH uh, 1.0 um, pin, uh, spacing pins in here. Um, just slide in there and we have our working model. So what we need to do, turn on the, res the transmitter first. up something with my transmitter so I'm gonna um, pause there for a second and mess around with the transmitter offline and then I'll be back nothing big I just had the wrong model selected on the transmitter so now we have the right model selected we're ready to go so what we're gonna do is plug in the battery and what we should see is a little blue light come in on the transmitter here when we are successfully connected. Oops, I didn't get the plug in cleanly. All right, there we go. So. So the transmitter is ready. All I need to do is plug in power. I get a actually, it's really interesting. It makes a little music sound. It's so quiet you can barely hear it. But um, there we go, and we have our solid blue light. So what we have is, as you can see, we have our rudder control. We have our elevator control and I don't know if you saw that but we have our throttle so so we have a fully functional power system power and control system for our Sop with pup. Now I don't know if you noticed, but um, what we have is is effectively the, the the transmitter like by default. Because what I did with again, I don't want to focus too much on the jumper T light for this for the purposes of this. But when I created the model, I just used the the wizard. Um, create model um, takes you through a series of prompts. Says, do you have a motor? Yes defaults that. Do you have a uh, ailerons? I said no. Do you have rudder and elevator? Yes. And it defaults those um, two channels. So what it's done as a result of that is it's put my um, elevator correctly on my right hand joystick, which is perfect just what I want. But what it's also done is put my rudder on my left hand joystick. Now because this is a three channel model, I'd, I'd actually want my rudder to be on the right hand. So I'm going to have to ch um, change the output from, um, or the input for the rudder channel from the left hand, um, the left hand uh, joystick to the right hand one. Um, I, that's not really a big deal and 
and then I should be able to get both of those controls working on here. The next step what I'm going to do is basically just center these control arms here. Um, they're basically centered now so um, clearly I've got my um, control horns not quite right. I'll be screwing in the the servos into the frame so they're firmly fixed and I'll also be gluing the receiver across uh, across the here it'll actually be mounted sideways so I'm going to do those uh, those few things get that all set up and then come back all right so now we have the controls working properly. We have elevator, and we have rudder, and all that really meant was that I changed the mixes on the um, the, the uh, mix on the mixes control on the model. Um, interestingly, that gives you an R E T A. Um, rudder, elevator, throttle, ailerons, canoe ailerons, so RET in terms of channel order. Rudder is channel 1, elevator is channel 2, throttle is channel 3, and ailerons, if you had them, would be channel 4 based on this um, setup. And that, I don't know, from what I've heard, um, is a little surprising for a DSMX. Um, which I thought should be um, T-A-E-R, um, which is what was confusing me. But um, now we have, uh, what's more important is that what we have here matches what's set up on the radio. So we have exactly throttle, rudder, elevator everything's working smoothly. Now I'm just going to do one more on off just to make sure everything comes up cleanly. Blinking blue light, solid blue light, So, there's a ready-to-go model. I'm going to um, now screw everything into place, um, glue the receiver on, organize the wires a little bit, um, and I'll, I'll show you how that's going to work. Basically, the, the wire for the motor is going to run along the side here, and basically I'm going to want to... Um, want it, so, uh, the idea is that I need to get it down so, it, so it's out doesn't interfere with the control horn here and that will work nicely because it'll come along here and really the the main thing is and I think I might unplug that is I'm going to want to run the the wire for this uh, rudder I'm going to want to run it underneath again so it doesn't get in the way of the control horns so there we go we're all set <laughs>